Hello, my name is Daniel, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the name tuple function that is found in the collections library. So, I'm not going to show how to use the name tuple, like what what can you do once you uh, once you created a class from it. I'm going to actually show what goes on inside the function. But you know how to how does uh, name tuple create the class and return that to you. That's the part that I find interesting. Anyways, uh, here's the function name tuple. It capacitance of type name, field names, verbose, and rename. I'll go over what uh, what these are in a moment. But first, let's look at the doc. So the doc says uh, right here it shows you an example of how to use name tuple. So I'm pretty sure you guys uh, have used it before. If you haven't, it's pretty darn simple to use, and it's yeah, it's pretty easy. So pass in the name of the uh, the class that you wanted. So for example, point and then the attributes that it should hold. So point holds x and y and then we pass right there. You see we passed the list with a string of attributes. So yeah, so once the class is created you'll see that we can access it right here p.x and p.y. <clears throat> so those are the attributes within the class now and that's uh, it gets populated every time you create an instance. So here you see we create an instance with 11 as x and as y is 22 and saved it in, put in p. So now you can access it through um, through indexes and just by itself and also through just by the name. So one thing to know here is that when the when you pass in the attributes and they're populated, they're saved as a tuple, so they're not mutable. So you can't do p.x equals 50. To do that, you're going to have to do something like p dot underscore replace, and that creates a new instance with the appropriate value. So yeah, pretty simple. All right, so like I said, uh, point is the name of the class, so that's type name. Field names or otherwise attributes are just you know the things that are going to be contained inside the class that are going to hold the data. Verbose uh, just prints out the the class, the template that I used basically, and then rename. Uh, if you set this to true and you pass in a uh, field name that contains like a Python keyword such as uh, such as is or none with a capital N. Python will rename the variable for you, that way you don't have to worry. If you set uh, rename to false, if you don't set it to true, and you pass in a keyword, uh, then you'll just get an error. That's basically it. Alright, so let's just get to it. Uh, Alright, cool. So first off, we check if the field names are a string. So over there you saw that, it's, uh, that they passed in a list, but actually you can also pass in uh, a string with just the attributes inside of it and it converts it into array because of this line right here so it splits it into comma and then space so you can either create a, let's see I'm just gonna use the example over there um, name tuple point and then you can pass in X Y just like that and and it will work you'll see that I don't get a single error so Python 3.4 and then test.py Oh, oh, I am a genius. Okay, there we go. So you see, no error, that works. So I can also do this, and I will get no error. Ta-da, because, yeah, eh, this is handling that test case. So yeah, so also right here, it says um, to, to map the field names with this function and then create a list out of that. So basically it just says convert all the field names, all the attributes that are passed in into string. So the other cool thing that I found out while reading this is that it doesn't check for strings necessarily but you can also pass in other things. For example a list of numbers one, two, three, four and then it will automatically point, print that out. For example we'll print uh, point a new class and uh, let's just pass in um, uh, five six seven eight and oops I set the timer that's not what I wanted oops I again I screwed up okay there we go all right cool so if I do that oh must be identifiers well that's not supposed to happen <laughs> all right anyways uh, string names oh wait uh, uh, yeah there's error checking down the down the list that's not what I, this is a horrible example so let me just go um, and copy this field right here this and let me just show you so let's pass in the numbers and if I run it 
Oh wait, I didn't print it, so how are you guys supposed to see? I am a genius, guys. Why don't you tell me? So print. There you go. So now if I run it, I should be able to see all the numbers converted into a string. And again, uh, let me comment that out. I am a genius, man. I am a genius. So yeah, you see? It converts everything to a string. But uh, as you'll see uh, later down below, uh, the name tuple actually double checks for this type of stuff. So it won't happen, but it still does that. So yeah. So that's a neat trick that I, I did not know. <laughs> well, I didn't think of doing. Anyways, uh, so some of you might be saying what happens if you have a variable. That, well, let's say b equals 80. Well, let's go over here and then just delete everything. So a and b, oops, a and b. And then let's go run it. And 90 and 80. So yeah, it just gets the, uh, it just gets the values that are stored within the uh, variable. Alrighty, so let me uncomment this and let me delete all of that because that is nasty. So just X and Y, and also you can have a comma in there if you if you like. So that will still work. I'm not sure if I show that. Oh, it's a list. Oh my god. So yeah, it either has to be a string of lists or just a one single list. I mean a single string. So ta-da. All right, cool. So let me go back in here. All right, so the type name, it converts it into a string, the type name, which you think is like, why do you have to convert the type name into a string? Shouldn't it be a string already? Well, uh, I decided to play around with it and think of one idea of why he would do this. So I just thought, well, what if the they have a class and they just want to get the class string of that, the string of that class. So for example, let's just create home. And oh, by the way, I'm using Python 3. I probably should have mentioned that from the beginning. So this is the Python 3.4 version to be specific. I'm sorry about that. I should have mentioned that since the beginning. So all I need is this, the string. So I'm going to just put that to show you. And then I'm just going to do uh, uh, house. Oops, can't even spell house. Wow. Good thing I'm not an English major. Name tuple home and then I'm gonna pass an A, B, and C and then I'm gonna print house so now if I run it so you see I get that boom I get the I get the house that string so now if I do uh, oops point I should get the same thing oops so now let's go you see point so I thought that was pretty interesting so just stuff that you see right there so I mean if the way I would have coded it I would just say hey if you didn't put a string well that's too bad or whatever but this is pretty cool just you know stuff like that whatever alright so let's keep on moving so here's the part that I was telling you if the rename is set to true uh, we just create a set right here and then we just add the attributes that we pass by but first before we do that we iterate through them and then basically we just check if any of them can lead to any problems potential problems when creating the class or in the future so basically like you know is a keyword identifier start, starts with you know you don't want these because uh, the template is already using some type of specific ones already so yeah just you know in case to never conflict with them and or if it's already in the set so you passed in two variables that are the same name so yeah and it replaces um, for example you pass in two A's it replaces the second A with the index of what it should have been so for example you do A B A it converts the second A into its index so it'd be uh, underscore two right there so let me show you so A so if we don't do any type of error checking if we don't put the rename to true uh, let me just clear this up oops clear oh come on seller what what does that even mean okay clear you see encounter duplicate field name a all right cool cool that's what we wanted but what if we put rename to true and we come over here and it should see the index equals two now well, let me do this. House. 
How some one two three? Oops. Let me populate it. So you see, two. Instead of an A, it now becomes a two. So two underscore two equals three, which is kind of weird, but uh, at least it does something. Uh, all right, cool. And also right here, some more error checking. So I'm not gonna go over that because that's pretty. I mean, that's. I mean, you can just read the errors and find out what's going on. Also right here, more errors. Da, 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 da. So you can just read the errors and know what it's complaining about. So I'm just going to skip that to make the video shorter. I mean, because it's already been 10 minutes. So all right, fill in the class template. So this is where this is what I thought was interesting. So he created a, a string template of a class. And right here, he's formatting everything. So he's populating the whole field. And then he's going to execute it so that it's uh, so it creates a class in a different namespace. So right now, I'm going to show it. So he passing the uh, the arguments, the type name, so that's the class name, the tuple. You see, he's creating a tuple of the field name, so that that's the reason why you can't change him. You know, passing some other stuff. I'm not gonna go over this because I mean it's pretty basic. And you might be saying, all right, well, where's the class template? Well, let me go to that. So class uh, templates. There we go. So you can just read this in the source code. So. You see, it's exactly like a class, except with the string. With the string, um, so you can put in the strings, format it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. Basically, all of these functions are right there, man. Uh, yeah. So okay, let me go back to where I was. All right, cool. So yeah, it creates a class definition, and now it has everything that it needs. So now we are going to create a namespace. Uh, you can read this. So basically, create a namespace in a diff in a temporary. Uh, uh, create the class in the temporary namespace. I'm sorry. So this is the namespace. So if you know anything about namespaces and how they work in Python, then this should be you know somewhat familiar. If you don't, that's completely cool. I just thought this part was interesting. So it creates a different namespace and then executes the class definition inside of that namespace. And the and I. And I asked, and I wondered why, and I, so I just decided to experiment, and this is, so, and I came up with, uh, well, not came up with, but I just kind of experimented why he created a, a, a temporary buffer. So let's just go right here. So if we just print out dir, um, oops, well, I didn't even print it. So okay, cool. I get this. All right, cool. But what happens if I do um, stuff equals the the body of a function def mom um, one two three four return um, four times four? So there, there's a function, and then I create a a namespace a dictionary, and I do name equal oops name equals stuff ns. And then I execute stuff, not in a temporary buffer, but just like that. And then I print ns. Well, no, let me just not print that out for now. And then I just print dir again. So, okay, cool. So, oh my god, I keep forgetting to print dir. Okay. So, okay, cool. So, as you can see, we have two extras the mom, the ns, and the stuff. So mom was picked up, oops, what happened? So mom was picked up by the global namespace and the NS and stuff. So this is all picked up. So I guess Raymond, uh, he's the one who created the source code, if I'm not mistaken, did not want that to be uh, seen in the global. So he just said, hey, I'm going to pass in a, uh, a temporary namespace. So he just passed in this. And now if we print that out, you're going to see that mom is no longer visible. You see, bam, it's just NS and stuff. So yeah, that's basically it. But if I'm gonna just cover, oops, I'm gonna just do this. And if I print NS uh, stuff NS stuff NS, I should be able to see mom. Oops, well this is doing, well this is going horribly wrong. Oh, of course, I'm not looking for stuff in S, I'm looking for mom within that. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. So, 
yeah you see function mom at whatever memory cycle so yeah that's uh, so yeah that's pretty much it for that part so if we keep going up um, let's see so yeah so create create the uh, execute the namespace get the function the class so you see how it says uh, right there function mom at whatever uh, whatever um, uh, memory address or whatever so it just gets it so now it's holding the class and now it's adding an attribute to that class and the and it's the template that I used to create it so here like I said verbose it just prints the template so this part is just for pickling if you don't know what pickling means it's just basically creating the code into bytes that's basically it and he has to do some of this stuff so I'm pretty sure not, not a lot of people use pickling since uh, it has a lot of security stuff uh, for example someone can if you just randomly unpickle pickle data you can execute code and it's not safe and whatever so I'm not gonna go over this part plus it's already pretty long alright well hopefully this served as something for some people alright thank you that's it